My story started somewhere in 2015, like any other Ghanaian uh, student after, right after university. I was looking for jobs basically, and then one thing led to the other. I won't, I won't really hurt people's feelings by saying I started with one shell of snail, but <laughs> well, <laughs> like other people, no, like other people say, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. They will say, how did you start your rice farm? Is it one, one, one grain of rice? <laughs> no, uh, we started with 50. 50. Five zero, and I lost all the 50 within the first month. Wow. Everything died, you know, because we were looking for training, we weren't finding. It was just myself and my girlfriend at that time. Oh, wow. Yeah, who is now my wife, by the way, so wow. I've legalized it. <laughs> <laughs> so we've mm. won in excess of $120,000, $120,000 wow. in grants. Yeah, another name for grants is free money. Nails are the most profitable farm in more per square meter. Well, we know that education is everything. The knowledge itself is half of the solution that you need. Even if we take the world's money mm -hmm. and divide it back to everybody, it will still go back to the rich people's hands because of attitude. What's up guys, how are you doing today? It's me here again and today I have something very special for you. I am here with the CEO of Trisolis Farms. In this video, you are going to learn all you need to know to start snail farming here in Ghana. Thank you so much for having You're me. You're welcome, bro. My name is Felix Apia Nyako, but most people call me the Snail King. The Snail you know, King. Yeah, because everything <laughs> snail, we do that. My story started somewhere in 2015, like any other Ghanaian student after, right after university. I was looking for jobs, basically, and then one thing led to the other. I knew a lot of the friends that I wanted to help get something to do were staying with their friends and families so we needed something that would not make noise or smell right so that we can raise it we knew our Greek was the next best thing to happen to africa aside our natural mineral that we have in the soil but you can't be renting someone's house and go do a full-blown pottery farm exactly. you know exactly. so we wanted something low-key but could still hit the target in terms of money so that's why we went into snow. So it was unemployment, being industrious like every Ghanaian, uh, you know, trying to find ways to make ends meet, basically. That's how we started Trisolis. Yeah. What inspired the name Trisolis? So Trisolis basically means, Solis is a place of comfort, well-being, your safe haven. So we said, if you have tried all others and it has failed, why don't you try a very safe haven, a very nice place, so Trisolis. Was it your initiative? Because when you were talking, I heard you mentioning we. Yeah, so it was just myself and my girlfriend at that time. Oh, wow. Yeah, who is now my wife, by the way, so wow. I've legalized it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we were looking for jobs, basically. Mm. You know, Ghana, they take you to school, they expect you to repay back right after, exactly. you know. So exactly. there was pressure mounting. People were saying, get some job and maybe marry and do stuff, you know. So. The pressure was mounting and we had we knew we had very small window because we had finished uh, our national service so we had some cash with us so we had to utilize it and multiply it as fast as possible otherwise we'll be singing the same song no jobs and joining you know whatever group so i was with evelyn so Evelyn is my wife and then we started this uh, from my granny's backyard by the way Your just the backyard. backyard earlier we we're doing some rabbits and we said no rabbits make a lot of smell snails do not make smell they do not also make any noise so it will be easy and when people come to steal stuff in the house they don't even look at the snail <laughs> twice because they'll be like ah what will i do yeah. with snails but they could steal rabbits earlier they were stealing rabbits they were stealing even plastic that we fetch water in and other stuff. So that was also one good thing that people didn't really like to steal things like snails because I don't know if there's a stigma to it, but the, most people have had their places robbed and snails were not touched. But out of all the other alternatives, why snails like that area? Okay, so snails, like I said, rightfully don't make noise. Mm -hmm. So very good for urban settings, like uh, even residential areas, like we call it in Ghana. You can do poultry. They will report you small time. The authorities will come and look after you and see what you're doing there, etc. And then uh, they don't, also smell the smell people don't like like you are renting someone's apartment and they hear funny smells they come when you're doing poetry or something 
you know so snails could be kept in the kitchen veranda hall even where people were sleeping they kept snails and because mm-hmm. they do, they are not invasive they don't emit anything you are safe with them they are okay they don't smell so that's why we chose snails and snails are the most profitable farm animal per square meter right mm. so you you take a meter by meter which is usually a, around this height from the tip of my finger to my shoulder blade and then you can put some animals in there you can put poultry in that small confined place mm. right you can put rabbit in there and they wouldn't breed a lot but you put snail in that small space and one snail can lay up to six zero eggs and let's say worst case half of that survives that's the most you can get in any farm animal and if we're doing small mats if you have 60 and you are selling one at at 10 cds that's 600 cds there and just a small space you've been able to produce that number of snails and snails are a delicacy Hmm. the interesting thing is that they are so expensive now snails in soup is going for 80 cds 70 cds so it's far expensive than chicken it's far expensive than any other animal that I know currently. You mentioned that after your service, you had some cash. Yeah. Um, how much did it take to start the, the snail farming? Yeah, so during my service, Eve's mom is a caterer. Mm. She does the local chop bar thing. So we did our service at uh, Obwasi. Okay. and then we're eating from the mom's place so we're saving small small no. we started with uh, about a thousand cities back then it was a big structure uh, but now people are fortunate you can just do something small you know start from like 200 cities 300 500 cities but we saved because we were closer to her place and she fed me and all that you know the rural four is, is always good you know <laughs> <laughs> today we have ready-made boxes okay. which are filled with soil filled with 20 snails filled with uh, mist sprayers uh, things that you use to spray water on them gloves will give you animal feed will give you calcium and every other thing you need to take care of them so uh, like I said earlier it was a bit expensive but mm-hmm. now we've made it into a household name product thing so it's simpler one cubicle which is about that height up to about my waist about mm-hmm. a meter long and then it has everything in there uh, talk about snails, soil, treated soil, everything already. That is 700 CDs for one box. So you can add up maybe 1,400 and get two boxes. Okay, so yeah. instead of like going through the hustle of finding it, you can just come exactly. to try something. You and yourself it. going to cut, you know, get a carpenter to do that. Uh, just come get everything, including training free. Most oh. people charge for 350 CDs, 400 CDs for training alone. Yeah, but we do that for free. And even if someone is not buying anything, they can come for free for training. Uh, that's our corporate social responsibility as well. We do for churches, schools, mosques, anywhere at all that the person wants to institution. If you're an individual, you can walk in any day and we'll train you for free. Oh, yeah. that's, that's so good. Yeah. So how many snails did you start with? And then how many snails were you producing maybe in the space of three months? And let's say today, how many snails is ideal to start with okay. if you are thinking of making profit okay so i won't i won't really <laughs> hurt people's feeling by saying i started with one shell of snail but <laughs> well, <laughs> like other people no snail. like other people say right uh-huh, uh-huh. they will say how did you start your rice farm is there one one grain of rice <laughs> no uh we started with 50 50 five zero and i lost all the 50 within the first month well everything died you know because were looking for training we weren't finding so we went to csr they gave us some training but it wasn't also best of the training so we we're still losing snails until we decided that ah why don't we own it and train other people as well now i'm happy to say that we've cracked the code we know what kills snails what makes them thrive what they like to eat what everything so the interesting thing is how we started was we bought a lot of the snails and dashed it to people okay. so that they were raising them. Some were putting them in Ayoa, uh, eating wearables, some were putting them in boxes, their chop box. Right after school, they will do it nicely, put them in, and they were giving us feedback. So they were giving us the information that, oh, they eat this, they okay. don't like that. I gave them this, they died the next day, this, that, that, that. And then we, we tabulated everything up to what we know now, and when we added more. So. Even though we lost the snails, we didn't let that deter us. We still did research, which is observational. 
and uh, we're able to get a lot of what we know now so now Price always owns about three million snails there above. Wow. Yeah. Because collectively we've built about two hundred and eighty something greenhouses and we still have about twenty more to build for the end of the year. So talking about your snails dying, I'm sure it is attributed to not having the correct knowledge on how to like rare snails. So what environment is suitable? For snail farming so why we are currently giving free training is also based on that because that nearly made us stop so we now give free training because of that well we know that education is everything the knowledge itself is half of the solution that you need what people don't really understand about the whole process is you need the training first so don't worry come for the training any other day you can start with any other facility that you want once people get a lot of it the knowledge gets expanded and then our sector gets a boom that's what we are looking for so even though we are biased that we would want people to come buy from us we also train people with the ideology and mindset that you can start something in your own house the old divider the old wardrobe you know you can refurb it and turn it into a snail greenhouse or a snail box and then you come for the training we teach you how to treat your own soil how to do everything so your mm. cost comes down but we would love to buy back from you mm. so anything you produce that you can sell you bring it and then we'll buy it from you so what is the typical life cycle of a snail so snails are slow growers because they are slow workers mm. and uh, they are slow in everything so the interesting thing is it takes a snail about a year and a half to be table size ready so if it was poultry poultry takes like up to about six months i might be wrong but uh, but a snail takes a whole year before it's table size ready that people can eat but there are three main places that you can sell a snail you can sell a snail at exactly one year old which is called the point of lace they are sexually matured to lay eggs and to reproduce basically but we don't eat them at that time you can eat them but people mostly put them in structures for them to lay eggs etc and then we have the second one which is the table size which is a year and a half and then we have the two years that we do for export so for the first year for instance after they lay a snail can a snail's egg can take up to 15 to 21 days to hatch so that's how long it takes for them to hatch and it doesn't require the mother to sit on like other mm -hmm. uh, animals that uh, snails lay and just go away you okay. know so most animals that lay a lot at a go don't uh, incubate their eggs on their own you know so if you have fish and other things they don't incubate they just go away so the same thing with snails because they lay in clutches of up to about a hundred some can time. lay up to a hundred at a time wow. but for business sake we say 50 or 60 so that is within the maximum threshold of business but the okay. interesting thing is even though it takes a whole year you don't feed them three times a day or like other animals that you have to do constant caring so you just spend 30 minutes a day on them like if it is very early in the morning you just do uh, clean their pens put in food and put in water you are done for the day so you have to come the next day and check that's all you do how expensive is it like both in time and in resources for the time it's fairly easy it's one of the easiest so you just clean whatever food you give them the follow the earlier day and then put in new feed water and then change their water that's all less than 30 minutes a day and the interesting thing is the feed snails eat household leftovers so from tubers like cassava yams they eat all that leftover so for the exception of salt that they don't like you can give them any other thing and they will eat and you can give them leftover fruits from fruit vendors like uh, pineapple watermelon all those things just put it in there and they will eat everything clean so you spend very little on feed unless maybe you are in a place you don't want to bother people you can still buy their animal feed which 50 cds for 20 snails can last you for two months oh, wow. so it's, it's better so worst case in a year you are spending less than 500 cds on them so compared to chicken snails is not something that people consume that much 
Can you highlight some of the nutritional benefits of snails? It will interest you to know that about 80% of Ghanaians eat snails and they really? don't even get them to eat. Really? That's how come we sell one snail for 80 CDs. When we take them to London live, next day delivery is in London, we sell three for 20 pounds. From September all the way to December, you won't see snails. So if you have snails, it's like holding gold like mm. in a literal sense of it because people will pay you any amount to get that i know a lot of people that let us raise snails and they come for it only at christmas times or close to december and they give you to their quote unquote bosses and they are scoring points because you know it's a delicacy and they themselves can't get it anywhere and according to ghana statistical service ghana consumes fifteen thousand tons of snails every year Wow. And out of that, only 20% is made or gotten in Ghana. And that is not from farms. That is from forests. You see people go into the mm -hmm. forest, mm -hmm. pick them, and then bring them. But now the forest is dwindling. We don't have uh, any good forest without the galamses and the mm -hmm. sun weaning. So now we have to make it a commercial sense to do snails on a large scale. Otherwise, they will all go away. Uh, snails are full of calcium they have other amino acids and they are one of them lean meats you can get so their cholesterol uh, levels are very low and they have uh, very low calories so unlike other meat sources they are very healthy so for old ages aged people for children for pregnant women is excellent because uh, the calcium help repair bones and then for old people with osteoporosis and other things that's why they love snails okay. so you can do that and most people also add the shells of snails to their feed they dry burn it like put it in a, a very hot fire and then grind it and add it to their feed in spoonfuls small small add. that was what we were fed on as kids as well my grandpa used to grind it and then put it in and you have your daily dose of calcium instead of going to the pharmacy so let me take you back a little bit to the rearing snails are delicate yeah how do you preserve them from dying and all other diseases oh, okay so for the boxes for instance they are devoid of ants we protect them against ants we protect them against other predators so no house flies no other insects basically lizards and all that they are protected from that even in the bigger structures which are the greenhouses and no animal can go in so it's secured 100 percent and we prevent ants from going in to take their food as well so ants compete with them with the food so they pick the particles and go away but they don't directly harm the snail in any way so all these setups like the boxes they have long legs mm -hmm. and then we give you a uh, bowls round plates that you put the legs in and put dirty oil or oil and water on it so that other insects cannot climb up and okay. go and harm them or hurt them assuming someone wants to go into it okay does a person need any special certification from either the government or any government authority or is just like a free and open business that anyone can go into okay the interesting thing is if you are doing a great you are not taxed directly unless you're doing services like us but if you're doing a farm and you are a young person you're exempted from tax for up to i think five years and now they are even saying i think five percent of your profit uh if you do on a larger scale you know up to a certain extent so you would need epa environmental protection if you were doing with chemicals and other things you know but we don't use we do solely organic or natural it doesn't alter the environment in any way so we haven't been asked to provide any environmental permits but when we're going for international programs they still want you to have epa so we do epa just to be safe and then there's something called a working permit mm -hmm. which if you're doing on a large scale you need if you're doing like the greenhouse or bigger or you are selling from your apartment you need what is called a working permit or uh, yeah which the assembly will rightfully give you i think it's 100 cities and then you get that that is if you are a big you know entity not uh, the small boxes or two of the boxes no so currently you don't need any certification for that but if you are selling the processed meat no then you need fda approval for that so i want to know what kind of infrastructure is suitable for snail farming 
so in terms of weather for instance uh, the snails love a humid cool place uh, meaning that no direct sunlight no rainfall snails breathe in air so if there's too much water in your pen or structure they will suffocate and die as well they are just like humans so cool dry area devoid of too much water and also enclosed they are nocturnal so they don't like light at all mm. anything like uh, in the mornings that you see is around 400 lumens they don't like anything like that to them it's like a human that the car is shining his headlights directly into your mm -hmm. eyes so a very dark cool humid place is what snails love so what kind of breed of snails are more suitable for rare so there are three types of snails major types of snails in ghana uh, which are the achatina achatina which is known as the aa or Mwapa. Mm. and there's achatina marginata which is the am the one they call pubri uh, usually found around the volta area and accra and some parts of Eastin. and then we have the last one which is we all see in our houses the small ones reddish mm -hmm. which are called uh, the catrevent or cotavent they are called achatina folica so they are not eating but let me put a disclaimer out there all snails are eating but why other countries consider them as pests is that they cook very short like three minutes and the food is ready that's why they are afraid because snails are a host to a lot of pests and mm. other nematodes and other things that will harm humans but we cook for one hour 40 minutes 30 minutes so if you are eating snails any type of snails that has a shell it is not poisonous but cook it well so that you wouldn't have meningitis and all the other diseases that they are saying they carry they do carry some of those but because of how we cook them they are very safe to eat and african snails are one of the largest that you have they grow african giants grow like up to big man's palm which is one of the largest that we have but the one that is most commercially viable is called the aa or the Mwapa or the african giant those ones lay a lot their skin is ash with dark spots but the other one is purely black the one we find in our house are more lighter in color they are more yellowish uh, ash to yellowish so those ones are not sold because there's a stigma attached to that particular one because it's safe of, to eat it, it's safe to eat i eat that i love that one because it's not expensive so it's mm. good on the pocket uh, because you find them anywhere uh, but where we find them you see we find them in our houses they are close to our washrooms and mm. we feel they are unclean unkept you know but if you are raising them on a farm it's different but we do the aa which is the wapa for export for local consumption and we have fda approved pouches that we sell which are snails that are ready to be put in soup we've washed it we've done everything so all the client has to do is cut it pour it into the soup or sauce and it's ready to go how much am i roughly to make like within 18 months period for rearing snows in retrospect you are looking at in a year or the 18 months like you rightfully said you are earning up to about if you invest like 2000 cities you are earning up to about 800 snails which we buy one at three cities if you do the math you're looking at about 3600 cities for the 18 months that is taking away your cost of everything your profit is up to about 3600 cities oh, wow. for the 2000 cd investment you made here yeah. assuming that someone just started how does he or her penetrate the local market so know? it's just like every other thing before you started uh, your channel you, you probably didn't know so much exactly. about it exactly. once you get close to it then you get a lot more insight into it so i tell people there's so much market than demand as i speak to you now because of the dry season if you go to the market now and you have a sack full of snails the women will beg you to buy mm. because there isn't any Sounds available like yes so they should do their research first they should probably go to the market and say i want to buy snails see how expensive it is and say if i come with snails of this quantity how much will i get or how much will you buy so the market is available but once you get closer to the snails and you get to know more you know that there are other avenues of selling even more than 
we are anticipating of buying but would love to buy from you so mm. i don't want to teach that small <laughs> <part>. <laughs> So, do you employ any technology to assist you in your farming? Yes. So, we have cameras, uh, high resolution cameras. So, we are able to target snails and check how they are doing, how they eat, and everything like that. We use that. So, we use cameras. We also use sensors like humidity checkers, like the hygrometers, temperature gauge. We also test the soil as well. And last but not the least, we use the mist sprayers for that production as well we have the irrigation or the snail greenhouses themselves which are closed environment we are able to simulate humidity in there so when you go in there is room temperature all year round mm. so our snails do not go into estivation or hibernation hibernation is when animals go into uh, a retreat or they slow down their bodily function so that they don't starve or they don't get dehydrated so we have that which monitors the room temperature and ensures that we have that temperature all year round so our snails are active all year round and also we encourage people to use excel to record daily reports of what they find as well okay. so what are some misconceptions about snow farming in ghana people think it's expensive because one you have to pay the training alone people give to you are close to 500 cds mm. uh, but we are now debunking that you know you can get free training uh whenever you visit us you just say i want the free training and we'll give that to you and then people are also saying that it takes about six months for snails to be ready which i'm saying emphatically it is a no so people will come on tv other platforms and tell you oh just put them in six months then you have a lot of money no so people also say you do one box and in a year you have so much money there you can't even chop now that's also not true so currently like i said the boxes are for studying research only and for personal consumption but if you want to go larger then you have to move your snails into another structure which is bigger and then you can now make the money from there and people think that if you raise snails in your house they say you don't get money well i doubt that because i have enough by the way and here we employ 22 people here alone wow. and our monthly discharge is around uh, 80,000 cities in terms of salaries alone and we've invested in other companies as well and uh, we are still growing and we currently have purchased a 50 acre land that we're going to do a project where every young person who needs land can come and farm and then when they finish we can look at that small percentage of whatever they grow in there and then people are also saying snails have meningitis and all that i would like to say yes in a way it is true not just meningitis because snails are a host to a lot of pathogens and viruses and because they walk on the ground mm because their body gets direct contact to the ground but they're interested in it immediately you cook it most of that goes away but you've seen a lot of the tv stuff where there's a medium rare and they cut it and you see blood traces in exactly. there no we, right. you can't find that in Ghanaian yeah. meals Ghanaians cook our meals so well people also say that snails lay in thousands i like to say no uh, they lay up to about a hundred depending on their sizes so if they are very big they lay a lot but if they are smaller you yourself if you tell me that your stomach size is one liter and you say you can drink 15 liters that's how it is so if the size of the snail is small and still tell me it can push a million snails uh, eggs in there then that is for so these are some of the things that we've heard about snails we have been able to debunk some and then some are real some are also not true are there government incentives for you as a snail farmer so in terms of company this is what people don't understand government are stakeholders in your company whether you like it or not in terms of taxation protection other things you know credence or credibility if you need credibility you can go to government agency and they can sign something for you that you can take and that will help you you know in your endeavors you know outside ghana or if you want to seek any funding or anything of the sort so government automatically own percentages of your company if you are a limited liability by shares or a company limited like as it's called so in terms of direct uh, benefits no 
but you know we are enjoying security freedom of yeah, trades all that so that is also part of uh, our enjoyment and as a young person mind you i'm still youth so as mm. a young person i enjoy uh some tax uh, rebates and then we also enjoy imports some of the imports are also free for a greek product so we just order it through the normal courier service and then it comes to our doorstep instead of going to pay uh so some of the so these are some of the perks but uh, in terms of loans in terms of uh monies no but we have a lot of donor agencies like likes of UNDP, British Council, GIZ, that gives us a lot of money. Not a lot, but disclaimer, <laughs> not a lot. But you know, some of them have competition. So we've mm. won in excess of one twenty thousand dollars, one hundred and twenty thousand wow. dollars in grants. Uh, another name for grants is free money. So you go. Sometimes it's a competition. We pitch and then we win. So they are like, what do you do for the environment? You know, how many people you employ? what good are you doing and if you are able to tell all those and make it very enticing then you can win recently we've won 21,000 usd from ghana climate innovation so yeah this is some of the things that we get for being Ghanaian. but for the government i'm sure they will come they will come okay. very soon okay. <laughs> all right so my last couple of questions with your years of experience in this business okay can you guarantee a beginner's success in snail farming yes and no why i'm saying that is that even if we take the world's money mm -hmm. and divide it back to everybody it will still go back to the rich people's hands because of attitude right someone would think already that snail is not profitable or snail is not a thing for me it's because i don't have a job that probably i'm starting but I took it as a business, right? So if I am doing it, definitely it works well for me. But if someone else is doing, depending on the attitude they go with, that might make them fail or might them make them a success. There's very little competition and uh, we are almost doing autonomous uh, here. No one touches us. Mm -hmm. well, we are far ahead and advanced yeah so what is some advice you will give to someone who is thinking of starting a snail farming everything looks tedious and stressful before you start so don't think that it's it's too difficult because someone has done it and you can do it always think of agrica as the next big thing to make millionaires in africa because i know a lot of Ghanaians that are exporting a great product and i'm making millions we have so much lands if not here in your villages or where your mom is from ask her ask your dad can i get one acre from your village to start something you can start anything not just snails i'm advocating for a great because food security is a very major issue at first we used to see sudan congo all that they were having farming and other things and when we we're younger we would see you know kids with vultures around them mm -hmm. you know all, all those things because of food security you know food security is good and i bet you anything you grow once you go to the market you get someone to buy from you so one do your research know that there's market learn about it don't just go say i buy one acre behind or in some waterlog area and i want to do this now do the training first like i said we for instance give free training there are a lot of other people that can give you free pointers on how to start things and you can start that and be very successful and most of the time there are a lot of uh, youth like ourselves here that are willing to help so don't feel shy i tell people that the worst someone can do to you is oh gentleman go and then call me later or oh, gentleman go i can't speak today but when are you ready so get that vim enter any office any factory any place do the ethical way go maybe book an appointment to meet say boss i am this i am that i would love to start a farm like yours how did you start where do i go and you would be shocked they will be willing to teach you because now agri hasn't has become a sector where we don't compete because there's so much market i now even need more people to come in that field so don't think that someone will despise you or think of you as a competitor in other sectors maybe but in a great no 
because the number of people I have that are still waiting for snails if you are producing and I get it from you and I even get a CD on one it's still better so that's why we encourage more people go into agri sector there's so much lands in Ghana that we can't even feed still we can't even feed 10% of our own population we import rice in a whole lot of tonnage we import everything you can take one of those and produce for Ghana and be very successful thank you all right thank you so much try so least as well guys I'll put the link to the uh, company and the contact details in the description below so you can as always reach out to them and that is it for today guys I'll see you in the next one